my class, welcome back. I'm Dr. April Strom, and this is the last video in this series that's focused on integrating using U substitution as the method. In this particular example, though, we're going to see what we call a complex substitution, and you'll see why we call it a complex substitution in a few minutes. There's going to be a few other sort of creative endeavors that we have to go through to make this integration actually work for us. It's not as straightforward as the previous examples that we have seen, okay? All right, so here's the problem that we have in the beginning. We've got the integral of this fraction, 2x squared plus 3x divided by square root of x plus 1. And your challenge, as is always doing u substitution, is to figure out what the best u would be. And you have choices here. It could possibly be the numerator, 2x squared plus 3x. That's one option. Um, I wouldn't suggest that when you have two or more things being added together that you parse those up. So you're gonna take either the entire numerator or not at all. So that's one option is the numerator could be the U. Another option is the whole denominator could be the U, the whole square root of X plus one. Yet another option is just X plus one could be the U. And again, I just wanna advocate that if you are inclined to think that maybe the X is the U, avoid that. You don't ever want to choose just one letter with nothing else around it to be the U. So definitely X cannot be the U. The other piece of advice um, before we decide what the U is, the other piece of advice is you want to grab as much as you can around what you think the U is, okay? To sort of get the most bang for your buck in your U substitution. So as I kind of look at things, um, it's really hard to tell. Should it be the numerator is the U, the denominator is the U? And again, you might try one and see where that leads you and turn around if you don't make good enough progress. So I am going to this time have, have us choose in this case the U to be the entire denominator, okay? Including the square root. So let's... Uh, let our u be equal to the square root of x plus one, okay? One reason I didn't pick just x plus one to be the, the u is because if I were to take the derivative of just x plus one, well, derivative of the x is literally just one, derivative of the one is zero, that actually doesn't really allow us most bang for our buck in terms of the u substitution. So I'm gonna choose u to be the square root of x plus one. And like always though, we still need to actually find the derivative of that equation. And again, just a reminder, square roots will be rewritten as a fractional exponent of one half. So let's just do that, u is equal to x plus one to the one half power. So I didn't do anything but rewrite that equation. Now let's find the derivative here. So du is equal to, using the power rule, I have one half times x plus one to the negative one half when I go ahead and subtract the one from that power of one half. And then technically I need to multiply by the derivative of the inside part since this is a composition function. Well, the derivative of the inside part is just one. So that actually worked out nicely for us. And then because I was taking the derivative of u with respect to x, I still need my dx, that's right here. Um, you might also go ahead and rewrite, and this is hard to know up front, so I'm gonna just point it out though. You might go ahead right now and just rewrite your expression so that you don't have the negative there in the power anymore, which means that we need to move that to the denominator. The two though is already down in the denominator, so it can have a partner here. So we have du is equal to one over two times x plus one to the one half, and then of course dx. Let's just leave dx kind of hanging out, out in the front. I'm gonna come back to this, but I'm just gonna leave this for now to say, this is a nice simplified version of what our du is. But when we go back up and kind of take, a, take note of some things, I certainly see that I have a square root, AKA power of one half, that's down here in the denominator. I also have a DX here. I'm just not quite sure how to deal with the two X squared plus three X. So we're gonna have to figure that part out here in just a, in just a bit. All right, so 
I'm gonna come back to my main problem and we're gonna try to start substituting things in as we can, and then maybe doing a little bit more creative algebra manipulation to finish it off. So, so far I have the integral of, well, we haven't tackled the numerator, so 2x squared plus 3x is just gonna be that for right now. And, um, all right, that's gonna be divided by, oh, I let square root of x plus one be the u. So I have a u here. And then now I have a dx. I'd really like to exchange out if I can a dx. I know I have a dx over here. I just don't have it by itself. So there's a lot of different directions I could take with a problem right now. Here's one of them. Okay, here's one of them. What I'd like to do is, again, exchange out the dx. I have a dx that has other parts to it. Let's go ahead and get rid of, not totally, but put on the other side this expression right here legally so that I have a, a dx that's by itself. Well, so I'm gonna come back here and I'm gonna say, let's go ahead then and multiply both sides by a two times x plus one to the one half power. And I'm gonna do that, of course, over here, two times x plus one to the one half power. On the right-hand side, this two divides out with that two, x plus one to the one half divides out with this x plus one to the one half power. And now what I actually have remaining here on the right-hand side with all of this stuff is just a wonderful dx. On the left hand though, I still have two times x plus one to the one half power du. Okay. All right, so some interesting stuff is going on. You might notice I've got kind of this mixture of u's and x's. We're gonna have to deal with that eventually, but right now we're okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and say, oh, in place of the dx that's right here, Let's actually put in its place all of this stuff. The two times the x plus one to the one half power times the du. So in the back end of my integrand, we now have multiplied by two times x plus one to the one half power du. All right. So far, so good. We only have like a partial substitution though um, here in its place. I, I still got, I've got du's, I have a u, that's great. I have stuff with x's. Now what? Now what, I, what can I do? Well, here's another creative endeavor. If you come back to your u that's here, right now the u is solved for u. u is equal to square root of x plus one. What if we solved it for x? Let's try that. So if I actually manipulated this equation and solved for x, I would have to square both sides. So I would end up with a u squared is equal to x plus one. Great. So squaring both sides essentially gets rid of that square root symbol, but now I have a u squared on the left side. And now what you can do is actually subtract one from both sides of your equation to get the x totally by itself. So you have u squared minus one equals now x. Wonderful. So this is at least a comparable expression, but this time though, solve for x. Why is that important? When I come back over here to my problem, Everywhere I see an x, three places, here, here, and technically speaking, right here, I can replace with just u squared minus one. Okay, I can get even more clever than that. If I notice right here, just this piece alone, quantity x plus one to the one half power, just that piece that I boxed is actually this piece right here, which we call just u. So the piece over here can be called a u, but all other places that I have x's in those two places, we're gonna have to fully exchange it out for a u squared minus one. Okay, let's do that and see where that leads us. So now I come back up to the problem and I say I have now the integral of, instead of two x squared, I'm gonna have two times u squared minus one squared u squared minus one squared plus three times u squared minus one. 
of course, all divided by my u that's still there. And then all of that is still now multiplied by two times the u that I'm gonna exchange out because I know x plus one to the one half is just a u du. Okay, I know it looks crazy and it looks like a mess of stuff, but if you're very careful and you notice something in particular, some things can actually start simplifying for us. I see I have a u in the denominator here. Oh, by the way, I should point out, I have nothing but u's, right? All x's are gone, so that's wonderful. And I see I have a u in the denominator here, and I have a u over here that can actually divide out. That's wonderful because now we have no more fractions. I, of course, still have the two that will eventually need to get distributed on everything in the numerator. All right, so let's see what we end up with. I have the integral of, um, let's go ahead and distribute and multiply out all that we can. So we have the two times the u squared minus one squared. So order of operations says, go ahead and square the u squared minus one. Then you'll distribute this two that's out front. So u squared minus one squared, well that's a, a first term will be u squared times another u squared, so u to the fourth times the two, so two u to the fourth. And then here, when I squ continue squaring, I have a minus u squared times another minus u squared, so minus two u squared, but distribute the two, so minus four u squared. Here, the last term is a negative one times another negative one, so positive one, but times the two out front, plus two. So I'm done here. Now I'm gonna to add to it the rest, distribute the three, three u squared, and then minus my three. I have no more fraction, that u is gone, but I still have the two here, so all of this, put parentheses here, to indicate that all of this is gonna get multiplied by a two, and then we've got our du still. Okay, so we just continue on a little bit more. I've got to go ahead and distribute now that two. You could have, if you wanted to, have dealt with that in this step, but there was a lot going on in that step, so don't wanna to do too much at one point. So I now have the integral of, if I distribute my two everywhere, and then I can collect my like terms in all my wonderful places. So I have four u to the fourth, minus eight u squared plus a four plus a six u squared minus six and then of course du now i'm going to go ahead and collect like terms i could have collected like terms and then distributed that's the love of math like we could have done any one of those steps in um, opposite order so i'm going to go ahead and now collect my like terms to simplify my life i have four u to the fourth but no more u to the fourth so we just keep a 4u to the 4th. I have a negative 8u squared here, but I can collect that with 6u squared here, so minus 2u squared. And then I have a positive 4, and then later a subtract 6, so that's going to be simply a minus 2du. All right, lovely. So now what we have is actually a manageable polynomial that we can just do the reverse power rules on individually. So you think about this term here, reverse power rule it to find its antiderivative, replicate that here, and a third time here. Um, so here we go. So we still have the four, so now we have this power of four. We think reverse power rule, I add one to the power, divide by new power. So my new power is five, divide by five, so I have uh, four fifths, u to the fifth, okay. 
The next one, subtract here, add one to the power of three, divide by new power. So I have minus two thirds u cubed. Over here, I don't have a u, so when I integrate it, the u comes in play, so I have minus two u. And now that I have integrated things and notice I didn't have my boundaries on my um, integral, I had an indefinite integral, I have to add my plus c right here. But I'm not done because I can't leave my answer with u still hanging out. I have to go all the way back up and sub back in what I know u to be. Yes, this whole square root of x plus one that's here. So when I do this, I still have my four fifths times. So instead of u, I'll call it square root of x plus one. Don't forget that whole thing's taken to the fifth power. Then I subtract two thirds times square root of x plus one, whole thing cubed, minus two times a square root of x plus one, and then plus your c. And now after all of that, we finally have our final complex substitution integral. So here's one of these problems where sometimes you have to get very creative in how you manipulate the algebra um, to make things work for you. We got ourselves into a position where I didn't have all the direct substitutions that I needed to have. So I had to go back and kind of do more manipulation so that I could ultimately get an integrand that had nothing but use in it. So that's really the key here in a problem that's as complex as this one. So I hope you enjoyed this particular video and all of the videos in this series. Please click on the Advantage logo to subscribe to our channel. Thanks.